The chilling entry of Darth Vader in A New Hope served as a stark introduction to the brutal force of the Galactic Empire. The massive Imperial Star Destroyer hunting its prey, the short gunfight between white-clad troopers aboard the runaway ship, and Darth Vader's merciless pursuit encapsulated the Empire's unrelenting grip. However, beyond Vader's ominous presence lay a deeper lineage of power and tyranny that extended far back in galactic history. The First Galactic Empire was not a unique dictatorship. It was the continuation of an ancient legacy, the Sith Empire. The origins of this oppressive regime require delving into the roots of the Sith Order and tracing its lineage from the formidable Darth Sidious who wielded authority as Emperor Palpatine. These malevolent figures were not the pioneers of Sith rule. Millennia before their reign, a civilization of Sith Lords forged the foundations of an empire that would leave an indelible mark on the galaxy. Exploring this ancient history reveals the beginnings of the Sith Order and illuminates the intricacies of its imperialistic reign. From the enigmatic origins of the Sith to their transformation into a formidable empire, the story of the Sith Empire is as sprawling and compelling as the darkest depths of the Force itself. So join me as we uncover the roots of Sith dominance and understand how the echoes of Darth Vader's ominous presence in A New Hope resonates through the tumultuous history of the Sith Empire. Long before the existence of Sith Lords, there was the Sith species. The Sith had fierce appearances with dark red skin. They had a pair of cheek tendrils and cranial horns, along with pointed teeth and glowing eyes. Three-fingered hands also differentiated the Sith from humans. However, it wasn't just their appearance that made the Sith fierce. They originated on the planet Korriban, and over time, its dark energies mustered into the Sith. In fact, the whole species was considered Force-sensitive, directly feeding on the dark side of the Force in a symbiotic type of relationship. They even cultivated ways to perforce sorcery. However, their affinity for the dark side made the Sith antagonistic. As their civilization evolved, it was defined by barbarism. The Sith lived in tribal circles, with a Sith sorcerer responsible for protecting his or her own people. Those circles waged constant war with each other, but there were no problems. Warfare and conflict were essential parts of Sith culture. It was the only way to live, so it was the best way to live. It was their ultimate existence. The Sith species could have existed as far back as 200,000 BBY, but their warlike Sith culture didn't develop until roughly 100,000 years later and it continued that way for thousands of years, until one Sith decided that it was time for a change. Around 28,000 BBY, a Sith named Adis was born, and it was immediately clear that he was going to be special. While most Sith had a red skin tone, Adis's skin was the color of charcoal. Because of that, Adis was raised as a chosen being, and it didn't take long for him to impress. He grew to a formidable size, and he displayed considerable skill in combat. Not only that, in a species full of Force-sensitive beings, Adis set himself apart with his extraordinary use of dark magic. Eventually, Adis was ready to live up to his status as a chosen being. Using Sith alchemy, Adis forged a massive battle axe and went to war. He wanted to dominate all the Sith circles, and he did just that. Adis killed anyone that stood in his way, and he conquered everyone else. He didn't stop until he had united all of Korriban and set himself up as a global king. Adis was so powerful that his followers believed he was an immortal god. They even bestowed him with the title of Sith Ari, which meant lord or overlord. Because of his bloodthirsty battle axe, Adis's lordship became known as the Reign of the Axe. It continued for 300 years until ships of galactic travelers showed up on Korriban. The spacefaring Rakatans had discovered the Sith and they wanted to share knowledge. At first, they did. The Rakatan shared with the Sith all kinds of secrets, including the ability to build holocrons. King Adis was enthralled with their Force-based secrets and befriended the Rakatans, until they showed their true colors. Above all, the Rakatans were conquerors. They had used Force-based technology to form the Infinite Empire, but they met their match with King Adis. He led his people to a dominant victory and expelled the Rakatans from Korriban, then he stole their spaceships and expanded to neighboring planets. Thus began a Sith Age of Discovery, and his name was forever preserved in the Sith history books. However, Adis' extended efforts resulted in his untimely death. Far from Korriban, the Jedi Order was developing, but not everything was sunshine and roses. In 24,500 BBY, the Great Schism shook the Jedi Order. 
The Jedi Knight Zendor believed that the Jedi had become too rigid, so he petitioned to form his own academy. As expected, the Jedi refused his proposal, so he decided to leave the Jedi behind. Except he didn't go alone. He had gathered a great many followers, who became known as the Legions of Latau. Civil war soon erupted, and it wasn't over until Zendor's legions were completely exterminated. While the Great Schism didn't affect the Sith, the Second Schism did. Around 7000 BBY, a Jedi named Ajunta Paul rose to prominence. He was gifted with the skill of alchemy, and as a Jedi Master, he discovered how to create life. His contemporaries were horrified and forbade his teachings. Paul was outraged at the Jedi's arrogance, so he fully embraced the dark side, gathered an army of followers, and started a war. This conflict became known as the Hundred Year Darkness as Ajunta Paul began to wreak havoc on the Jedi and the Republic. But in the end, Paul was defeated and humiliated. Stripped of his rank and weapons, Paul and his followers were banished from Republic space. Traveling the galaxy, the Dark Jedi eventually found Korriban. When Ajunta Paul and his followers landed, they were intrigued by the Sith's knowledge of the Force, and they decided to stay. King Aedas had been dead for thousands of years, but the memory of his defeat of the Rakatans had lived on, so the Sith were wary. Initially, they resisted Paul's efforts to gain their knowledge, but in the end, they failed. They were in awe of the Dark Jedi ships, technology, and command of the Force, and before long, the new arrivals were hailed as gods. With his status becoming more and more secure, Ajunta Paul infiltrated the Sith society and personally killed their king. To the Sith, that wasn't a terrible offense, it was a sign of power. So Ajunta Paul was hailed as their new leader and given the title of Jin Ari, which meant Dark Lord. The Sith even believed that he was the manifestation of the left-handed god Typhogem. As the first Dark Lord of the Sith, Ajunta Paul wasn't satisfied with ruling a single planet. He had tasted power before, and he was all too familiar with warfare, so he founded the first Sith Empire and expanded to many star systems. Interbreeding with the Sith species and combining their physical and force strengths, Paul continued his expansion for decades. When he died, he was buried on Korriban in what would become known as the Valley of the Dark Lords. However, that was only the beginning. Ajunta Paul's empire would continue to grow. For 2,000 years, it remained undetected in the Stygian caldera. But eventually, the Sith rediscovered the Republic, and remembering the heritage of their founders, they wanted revenge. So the Dark Lord Naga Sadao invaded the Republic during the Great Hyperspace War. Unfortunately for him, the Sith Empire was utterly defeated, and many thought that it was gone for good. However, the Sith Lord Vitiate survived the turmoil and lived on. He secretly refounded the Sith Empire in the Unknown Regions, and after biding his time, he started controlling galactic events. Around 4000 BBY, he instigated the Mandalorian Wars. During those events, he drew Revan and Malak to the dark side, which started the Jedi Civil War. When that was over, the Cold War began and would continue until 1000 BBY, when Darth Bane destroyed Lord Khan's Brotherhood of Darkness. Thus, the time of the Sith Empire was over, and they went into hiding under the rule of two. But what do you think? Which Sith Empire was the worst, and which Sith Emperor was the most powerful? Was it Ajunta Paul and his life-creating powers? Was it Darth Vitiate who kept himself alive for 1500 years? Or was it Darth Sidious, the Sith that finally destroyed the Jedi Order and conquered the Republic? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.